So if you are in the unfortunate habit of relying on the national media uh, for your news and information, you probably didn't hear about the brutal assault of a white Macy's employee by a black man in June. Uh, the attack happened at the Genesee Valley Mall in Michigan on June 15th. Uh, here it is, if you, if you haven't seen it. Watch this. Boy. Oh, shit. Boy, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Quit touching me. Yeah, don't hurt. Don't hurt. Stop moving. I'm sorry. Don't hurt. I'm sorry. Don't touch me. The assailant there is an 18-year-old man named Demir Palmer. His brother filmed the attack, reported it to uh, the media, which, which happily ran with the story, uncritical as always, uh, reported that the employee had used a, used a racial slur. At the time, the brother, uh, an alleged rapper who goes by the name F.T. Quay, said that they were innocently shopping for a new shirt when the employee, in full hearing of the two brothers, referred to them using the N-word. Um, this is what the brother told the New York Post, quoting now from him. He said, I just want people to know the real story of what really happened and what's in the description of me and my brother just walking into Macy's, just minding our own business. And yes, we made a petty joke and asked the guy, was the shirt too little when we uh, when he could have asked me? He was just being funny. And just the fact of the remark that he said that we all heard and just what else were we supposed to do in this age and time? He didn't know what else to do. That was just his instinct. Of course, uh, it, it shouldn't matter if the employee said a bad word or not. That would in no way justify felony assault. But it was obvious to anybody with two brain cells rubbed together that the story from the brothers was bogus. Um, and I said as much right away, right after this happened. I said, this, the, I guarantee you, the word was not actually said. And indeed, what do you know? It was bogus. It was made up. It was a lie. He never said the N-word. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. We'll get back to that in a second. All right. Let's back up again. Remember, this happened on June 15th. The local prosecutor, David Lighton, did not file charges against Demir Palmer until June 26th. That's over 10 days later. It took 10 days to decide that pummeling a man while he's crawling on the ground begging for mercy is, in fact, illegal. Um, here's, here's Lighton on June 26th announcing the charges. Listen to him. He shook up and he's uh, emotionally upset, as well as physically upset, but he's emotionally upset to think that you know, anybody would think he said the alleged vile, racial, provoking slur because he says he didn't say it and his history suggests he didn't say it. We're charging uh, Demeyer Cannell Palmer with a count of assault with intent to do great bodily harm less than murder. It's a felony assault charge punishable by up to 10 years in prison. This was an unprovoked attack. Uh, the internal video from Macy's shows the suspect approaching uh, from behind. The victim, the store manager, appears unaware that he's even there. Uh, the suspect then sucker punches him from behind, knocks him to the floor, continues to punch him while he's on the floor. There is no evidence of provocation whatsoever. Um, even if there were verbal provocation, which we have no evidence of, violent retaliation is not permitted by the law. Vile, racial, provoking slur. That's what Lighten is focused on. You see how in the context of announcing charges against a man who committed a barbarous assault against another human, he feels the need to begin by denouncing a word that there's no reason to think anyone even used. By the way, no charges were filed against the brother who filmed it. Um, okay, so, so fast forward two months. That was, that was about two months ago. Two months forward, and the obvious has now been confirmed. The racial slur was not said. It was a lie. It was a hoax, yet again. But Demir Palmer blames his brother. So no honor among thieves, or in this case, among people who randomly assault retail employees. Palmer said that uh, his brother told him the N-word was used, and that's what led to the assault. Now, here's where we get to the inevitable and yet no less outrageous part. Palmer's brother still has not been charged with any crime, and Palmer himself is looking at quite possibly getting off with probation. Probation. And not only probation, but he won't have a criminal record in this scenario. This will be expunged from his record, like it never happened. Palmer uh, pleaded guilty to assault with intent to do great bodily harm, but the assistant prosecutor, Patrick McCombs, 
says that he'll be sentenced under something called the Holmes uh, Youthful Training Trainee Act. The Holmes Youthful Trainee Act. Now, I had to Google that, and it took me uh, to a website of Tannis and Schultz, Michigan-based lawyers. Here's what they tell us about the Holmes Youthful Training Act. It says, the Holmes Youthful Trainee Act, more commonly known as HYTA, uh, provides individuals between the ages of 17 and 24 with a second chance. Under the act, an individual charged with a crime may petition the court for status as a youthful trainee. The Holmes Youthful Trainee Act states, if an individual pleads guilty to a criminal offense, Committed on or after the individual's 17th birthday, but before his 24th birthday, the court of record, having jurisdiction of the criminal offense, may, without entering a judgment of conviction, um, and, uh, and with the consent of that individual, consider and assign that individual to the status of youthful trainee. If the court grants the individual status under the Holmes Youthful Trainee Act, he or she will be placed on a probationary term. If he or she successfully completes the probationary term, the criminal conviction will not be entered into his or her record. The court will dismiss all charges, and his or her criminal record will remain clean. Okay. Dismiss all charges. That's where this is very likely headed. Official sentencing is not until September. Technically, Palmer could still get 10 years in prison, and at the conclusion of that sentence, then his record is wiped clean. But I think we all know that's not going to happen. The sentence can be anything from probation to 10 years, and all signs are pointing to probation here or something much closer to that end of the spectrum. And then clean slate like magic, like it never happened until it happens again, which it will because men who pummel other men for fun don't just wake up one day as decent human beings. That doesn't happen, except maybe in fairy tales. Now, according to the uh, ABC 12 report, a local affiliate in the town, uh, much of the court, the court hearing over this case had to do with the issue of the phantom N-word and how upset that made poor Demir Palmer. Reading from the AP report, it says, after pleading guilty to the 10-year felony against him, assault with intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder, Palmer uh, shared with the judge what led to the assault inside the Genesee Valley Mall on June 15, 2020. And then this is Palmer now. He says, I asked him a question about some clothes, Palmer said. I asked him about the jacket type that I was about to get. Palmer said the man answered him. Uh, They laughed. And then his brother told him the store manager had called him the N-word. He admitted that he since learned his brother lied to him. Big shocker there. Um, Now we continue. The assistant prosecutor questioning the brother says, why would your brother do that? And he says, "I, I wouldn't know. I honestly wouldn't, Palmer replied. The assistant prosecutor, okay, now listen to this part. The assistant prosecutor told Palmer he understands the anger that would fuel the assault, but he said the store manager has asked that the charge does not stay with Palmer forever. Okay. He understands. He understands how a person might be so mad about a bad word that he would beat another person senseless in the middle of a Macy's. He understands. And yes, the victim in this case apparently has expressed his consent to the lenient sentence, And that's the human shield that the prosecutors are hiding behind here by saying, well, it's what the victim wants. But the fact that the victim, who'd already been attacked once, didn't want to come out and demand a harsher sentence is completely irrelevant here. Uh, We can think of many reasons why he might express that point of view, even if it's not how he really feels. All right. So a lot lot needs to be covered here. Uh, First of all, once again, who gives the slightest damn whether he said the bad word or not? It is, in fact... Not understandable for an adult to commit felony assault in response to a word. Not understandable at all. The implication from the way this sentencing is working out is that felony assault is legal, or at least not very illegal, if a black man even so much as believes a racial slur was said. I mean, what if the slur had been said? What then? Would they have simply let him walk, no questions asked, not even probation? Second, and, and I'm sounding like a broken record here, but, but, but you know, we have another incident in this case that if the races were reversed, would be headline news. The assailant will be looking at hard time behind bars on federal charges, hate crime charges. Now, I don't think that hate, the hate crime designation should exist at all. I think the whole category as a matter of law is absurd. But if we're going to have it, then it ought to be evenly applied. And this is a hate crime. In fact, Demir Palmer admits as much. He told on himself in his excuse, he admits that it's racially motivated. Think about it. He assaulted the store clerk because because he thought that the clerk had said a word. Now, side note, I don't actually 
believe him about this. I don't think that he thought that the word was used. I think that this was something both brothers decided to do for fun and for viral fame. Uh, that's my theory. But in any event, going based on his testimony, he assaulted the Macy's guy because he thought that the Macy's guy had said a word. We can assume that Demir Palmer would not have assaulted a black man for saying that. In fact, we know he wouldn't because he himself uses the word he's supposedly mad about the employee allegedly using while he's assaulting the employee for using the word, which he didn't actually use, if you're following me. In other words, he assaults the employee because the employee is a white man who he thought used a certain word. He assaulted him for being a white man using a certain word. This is not an argument that the word is the same when used by white people as by black people. That's not my point. It's an argument that this assault was undeniably motivated by the combination of the alleged word and the race of the person who said it. That is, by definition, a racially motivated attack, a hate crime. He should be going to federal prison for this. But we know that everything is in two tiers in this society. The media puts black on white assaults and murder on one tier, a low tier, white on black on another, and the justice system does the same. Third point, speaking of the justice system, we see here the actual type of reform that is necessary. Put aside all the racial stuff and the double standard, all of that. Think about this youthful trainee nonsense. The justice system in Michigan, home to Detroit, one of the most violent cities in America, considers adult violent criminals to be trainees and will release them back into society without even any indication that they are actually violent and dangerous. There's no, there's no justice here because there's no punishment. And they're failing to protect society on two levels. First, by releasing violent criminals back into communities, and then by refusing to tell the communities that these are violent criminals. So a law like this fails in every conceivable way to ensure that the justice system does what it's supposed to do. You know, we don't have a large-scale problem in this country of the justice system, system coming down too hard on the bad guys. There may be, there's some examples of that, sure, but there are many, many, many more examples of the justice system putting on, you know, its kids gl kid gloves and slapping violent, dangerous people on the wrist and then patting them on the head and sending them on their way, practically inviting them to continue committing crimes until they finally done something so heinous that even the most lenient and henpecked prosecutor has no choice but to take the book and throw it at them rather than doing what they normally do, which is to take the book and throw it out, allowing criminals to continue along in their criminal ways. The streets of our cities are overrun by dangerous, violent people who are known to the system, known to be dangerous and violent, and yet are permitted to stay out on the street, free, unencumbered. And the story often has a predictable, infuriating, and tragic ending. And something tells me that the story of Demir Palmer very may have the same sort of ending. Thank you for tuning in to The Daily Wire, one of the fastest growing conservative uh, outlets in the entire country. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and then subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our content.